Hi, guys. Uh, today, I'm going to discuss certain concepts relating to this particular question from linear algebra. Let's read out this question and let's understand what all concepts we would be using in here. Let W be a subspace of the vector space R3. Then, which of the following set of vectors form a basis of W? So the first option is 1, 2, 1, 1, minus 2, 5. Second option is 1, 3, 2, 1, minus 1, 0, 4, minus 1, 0, 3, 1, minus 3. Third option is 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, minus 1, 1. Fourth option is 1, minus 2, 1, 2, 1, minus 1, 7, minus 4, 1. So, which would actually form a basis for this subspace of R3. So, in this question, there are certain concepts that we must be very, very clear of. The first concept is the concept of basis. What do you mean by basis for any vector space? So, basis for any vector space is a set of linearly independent such vectors which can generate the entire space. So, it's the set of vectors from the same space, say V is the space, such that such that let me call that set S two axioms are satisfied. Two conditions are always satisfied. The two conditions are Number one, S is linearly independent. And number two, number two, the span of S is the entire V. That is S, the set of this set of vectors, linearly independent vectors, is generating the entire space. So out of these, which is that set of vectors which can generate the entire W, W, which is a subspace of R3. Now, if you remember from linear algebra, if you have a finite dimensional vector space, in a finite dimensional vector space, Either of the two conditions, if, if one of them is satisfied, the other one will automatically happen. In a finite dimensional vector space, in case S has exactly the same number of vectors as the dimension of the vector space, then S is a basis if either S is linearly independent or the span of S is equal to V. So either of the two conditions. Earlier we have, by the definition of basis, we have two conditions which must be satisfied. That definition is for both finite dimensional vector spaces as well as infinite dimensional vector spaces. But when you have a finite dimensional vector space and you know that the dimension is, uh, you know, say N, if you take up a set which contains exactly n vectors, then that set will be a basis if either that set is linearly independent or it spans. So you have to check for just one single thing. What I'm trying to tell you here is that R3 is finite dimensional vector space because the dimension of R3 is three. Coming to the question now, R3, the dimension of R3 is equal to 3, right? The dimension of R3 is equal to 3. 
Now, the dimension of subspace of R3, which we are calling W, W is a subspace of R3, will always be less than or equal to dimension of R3. The dimension of subspace of R3 will always be less than or equal to the dimension of R3. That's what happens in any subspace. If you have a subspace, then the dimension will be less than or equal to. It can be equal to or less, but not more. Before we jump on to calculations, there's another concept which this question is uh, you know, making us ponder about. And that's the concept of subspace, right? Now, what do you mean by subspace? Like set has a subset, a vector space has a subspace. So subspace basically means that if I say W is a subspace of some vector space V, then that means W must be a subset of V and W is a vector space in itself under the operations used under the operations used in V. Okay. So under the addition and scalar multiplication used in V. In case W is also a vector space, not just a subset, we will call it subspace of V. Now let's have a look at the options once more. So the first option contains two vectors and the second option contains four vectors. The dimension of R3 is 3. What do you mean by dimension? Dimension is the number of vectors that uh, the, the basis should consist of. That's what is dimension. So we can rule out these two options because in option A, you have less number of vectors if I compare it to R3 dimension. And in number two option, I have four vectors. Again, the number of vectors is not equal to three. So with that, I can actually uh, eliminate these two options. And let's jump on to option C and D. What do we require for basis? We require a set of linearly independent vectors. Since we already know the dimension, it's a finite dimensional space. So we can just check for linear independence of these two sets. The one which will be linearly independent will form the basis for this space. So let's start with it. So option C I'm going to take. There are three vectors, one, one, one. One, two, three, two minus one, one. In order to check for linear independence, create a vector equation C1, V1 plus C2, V2 plus C3, V3 equals to zero equals to 0. When we say 0 here, that basically means 0, 0, 0. 0 in R3. So that will give me three equations. C1 plus C2 plus 2C3 equals to 0. C1 plus 2C2 minus C3 equals to 0. C1 plus 3C2 plus C3 equals to 0. Now let's create a matrix formulation in order to solve this. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, minus 1, 1. And your right hand side is actually just zero. So it will not make any difference. But this is what the augmented system will look like. Okay. For linear independence, what do we require? If the trivial solution 
is the only solution. If the trivial solution is the only solution to this system, then it would be a linearly independent case. So all I have to do is, since it's in a in three cross three system, find the determinant. Determinant would be equal to one into two plus three minus one into one plus one plus two into three minus two. So it turns out to be five minus two plus two. So that gives you 5, which is not equal to 0. That implies unique solution. Implies unique solution. When you have a homogeneous system of equation, in Ax equals to 0, homogeneous system of equation, x equal to 0 is always a solution. So there are only two possibilities. If determinant is not equal to 0, you get unique solution. If determinant is equal to zero, you get infinitely many solutions. When you get a unique solution, unique solution is the only solution uh, which already exists, that is x equals to zero. You really don't have to find it. So that means in our case, unique solution implies trivial solution is the only solution. And that means it's a linearly independent case. So C should be the correct answer actually. Uh, to this question. Well, I can also actually check for you the D part. And I guess this time we can go by it directly. We can just create the determinant. So option D, the determinant will look like 1 minus 2, 1, 2, 1 minus 1, 7 minus 4, 1. And well, well, the determinant turns out to be 1, 1 minus 4, minus 2, minus 2 plus 4, plus 7, 2 minus 1. So it's going to be minus 3, minus 4, plus 7. And that is minus 7 plus 7, 0. So determinant is 0. Determinant 0 means you have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions imply linear dependence. So the correct answer, guys, would be option C. Option C, uh, wherein you are getting linearly independent vectors. These three vectors are creating the they, they are creating a basis for the vector space R three.